Hey everybody, welcome to the show. So glad you are here. This is going to be a different show because we have opera singer Ryan Watherspoon here to help us introduce some segments so that everyone can understand all the different things that Music City Corner actually does film. So what do we highlight, guys? Well, we do highlight opera singers. Not until today. But we do country. Jazz. Some folk. And opera singers. Red carpets footage. We do that. Pop. Pop. Live theatrical performances. Which are operatic in nature. A, a local. And when we're out on the street asking you, why don't you know about the show covering? And, right. Yeah, and then some locally produced films and actors. And opera singers. Okay, stay I'm tuned. We'll find a tenor. We're gonna. Um, we'll, get some we'll, water. we'll be right back. All right, and now we are here with Ryan Weatherspoon to talk about all the stuff that he does. And you are so multi-talented, it's hard to even really begin. And you're on the show because you are the lead actor in the locally produced film, Fog, which we're gonna talk about later. Yeah. But I wanna go over everything else you do, because you're like, you're an opera singer, you do impersonations, and you can do hundreds of those. You're an <laughs> editor, you score films. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was reading on the Fog page that there were several times they almost killed you during filming. Oh yeah, I <laughs> was on a stool and this was uh, a sheer luck that the stool fell back and you know just like any stool it has four legs and it flipped upside down and it hit my leg but I, I mean, easily could have been impaled. There was a noose around my neck, did I say Just, that part? Yeah, yeah. It was that, lightly that's... draped over <laughs> uh, a limb. It wasn't tied to it, but I just flipped, and it was oh, just goodness. out of nowhere, and I, it thud, and I didn't hurt myself at all. Good. So, and then there was a near drowning, <laughs> um, but I, I was <laughs> fine. I was just waiting for Elvis to call cut, and he, I couldn't hear him, so I was holding the action under the water, and. Here he comes, jumped in, ruined his cell phone, I think, or his keys oh or something. Gosh, yeah. Oh my thought, oh, that's so sweet. But he's very caring. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so tell us about everything else you do. So you have, I'm, I'm interested in your speedbumpintros.com? Yeah, that's a radio jingle company that uh, my fiance actually found a tweet. Twitter, that tweets, I don't do sure. that. Twitter, Twitter. She said, hey, there's this company looking for a singer in Nashville to do country stuff, and I can sing country, so I, I submitted some songs to it, and I usually never do those things because uh, they sometimes don't pan out. And the guy called me back the next day, and long story short, over a course of a year, I did you know one jingle a month, then five, then 10, then 20, then 30, That's and four. Great. And I'm a partner of the company, so it's myself oh, and two wow. other guys, and we're on 200 stations all over the United States and in New Zealand and the Bahamas. When and I listen to some of it, it's very interesting. If you guys want to just find something really interesting to do. Thank you. So you look know, at speedbumps.com. And, and Speed you know, there's bump nothing. Intros.com. Well, and there's nothing better. Really? Yeah, than <laughs> doing a jingle and hearing the cash register jingle. <laughs> yes. Doing a jingle, yes. And that is very true because voiceover work actually is <laughs> fairly well paying here in Nashville. Can so, yeah. and, and you do impersonations. So can you, like, can you, do you have <clears throat> one for us? Like you do so many, right? Singing impersonations. Okay. Yeah. I mean. Give I, us an example. Uh, like what we would write, we write the intro, we write a jingle in the intro of the song and we usually emulate the chorus of that song. We have to sing it like the singer. So okay. take um, uh, Brian Adams, you know. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. I got my first real six string, bought it at the five and dime. So I Played my it jingle. my fingers bled. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, <laughs> sorry I had that moment. That's <laughs> so. That's very good. Um, you can sing the song like a singer if you're singing the lyrics because it's built in our phenomes mm -hmm. and everything but when you have to write new lyrics to it it gets a bit challenging to keep that same tone so like you know uh, I would sing like uh, mix 10177 you know from the 80s to now 
So it, it gets a bit challenging. <laughs> there, there's fun things like the, the 80s had a tone that was like so dramatic and so specific. And oh, I gotta do it like this. Like, uh, yeah. Tears for Fears. Like, like, 80s was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am looking forward to hearing more of that from you. So thank you so much yeah. for coming. You are wonderful and fog and terrifying and, and wonderful. So thank you. Thank you. Ryan Watherspoon, everybody. Thanks for having me. So which 80s song do you want to do now, man? I mean, you know. Shout. Oh, my God. These are the things I can do without Come on On the street coverage Live Hey everybody, this is Mary Meyer with Music City Corner and we are here today at the Charlie Daniels 40th Anniversary Jam Okay, we're here with Gail now and a little bird just told me that you were at the very first Charlie Daniels Volunteer Jam? That's right, and everyone passed that, including the last one. So who are you most excited to see in the concert? Um, Charlie Daniels. Who are you most excited to see? Charlie Daniels. Charlie, da everyone's saying Charlie Daniels. So you've seen some Music City Corner episodes. I have. Have you seen all of them? So Music City Corner, that's the name of our show. Have you seen how many episodes? Uh, I haven't seen any of them, unfortunately. He's not seen any episodes. So. Music City Corner, have you heard of it? Yes, she's not heard of it. So Music Music City Corner, have you seen all the episodes? No. You've seen the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, we got what fan. What do you guys think of Late Night? I think that's when I'm awake. That's when most of us musicians yeah. actually can watch <laughs> TV. Come on, Mary, recovered footage. We're going outside to a red carpet. Hey everybody, I'm Mary Meyer with Music City Corner and we are here on the red carpet for the Providence premiere. Okay, we are here now with the Wilharms. Everyone has just been like, when I ask them what it's like working with the Wilharms, they kind of come unglued. Like they just can't say enough good things about you guys. And I would have to say this is the first time I've ever got a call sheet a month in advance. So good, good <laughs> job. Good job with that. So how did the idea for this film come about? I, this is an idea we came up with back a number of years ago, and then we were starting to work on another one, and we were like, well, there's no way we can do another silent movie. You know, we've already done that. And the next thing we knew, I was writing a silent movie from that idea we'd had years ago, so. So I want to ask you guys what it is like working with the Wilharms. They were fantastic, yeah. Uh, they, they just had a, a real clear vision, and they were able to articulate that in a beautiful way, compelling way, inspirational way. So what was it like working with the Wilharms? Oh, it was wonderful. They were so relaxed, and it just amazed me how they could wear so many hats and be so calm and just get everything done. They were wonderful. Fred and Sharon are incredible. They are so kind. They are so productive. You know, they don't, seriously, they don't waste a lot of time, which is, you know, valuable. Isn't it, it's great. Sharon's great, isn't she? She is great. She is a hard worker and a gifted filmmaker. And now here's Bob on the Carpet de Rojo. That's red carpet. <laughs> I'm wearing a cummerbund because these pants don't fit and it's covering the fact that I can barely fasten them. What inspired you to pull that together? I had uh, been wanting to do a short film for many years mm -hmm. and I thought I'm not getting any younger so I thought I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and write it and uh, do it for the uh, filmmakers group because that's the best, uh, the best avenue to get it done. So will, will the film that you've done here go up uh, where folks can see it online or anything? Uh, right now I'm, I'm busy applying with the festivals. Then I, I want to try for other stuff. I think he will make it happen. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully we, hopefully we do something good. With Nadine. Tommy Barnes and his cast. I have to ask is like, what inspired this film? It just seemed like an interesting thing. I just kind of sit around and think about what would be interesting and that's what popped up, so. How did you find working on a production that was such a family production? Your brother's in it, your mom's It consumed very my life for a little bit. Overall, I'm glad that I get to experience this with my mom and my brother. It's like, it's like a family bonding experience. So Brandon, is a, he's actually a host for comicbook.com, and then Bennett and I were cast as his parents, because if you look, like, look at them. Get a, look, see? See, there you go. 
There you go, father, son, in his film, Shifting Gears. Um, I understand you don't care for chicken salad. Listen, not when she, not when it's six hours old, it's sitting in the sun wrapped in tin foil, and they're sitting there telling me, take bites of the sandwich that this other guy that you auditioned for his role already took bites of. <laughs> this could be a problem, folks. Kevin, would you like to join the Music City Corner team? I would love to. Yes! Oh, wow. You heard it here first, folks. Kevin Fell has, has uh, moved into indentured servitude for Mary Meyer. <laughs> Just saying. We're framed this way because I don't have black shoes on. And now it's time for a live studio performance. Woohoo! Live studio performance. You know I've been hurt before I'm a shipwrecked tart washed up on the shore So I'm free to walk on dry land You know I've been burned before An innocent touch reaching for the warm Still feel the sting on my bare hands That's when he rolls his eyes and says to me Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby I ain't like the rest of them Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby You can learn to hope again Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby You can't let your faith give up Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby Don't be scared to fall in love Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby Cause your heart is safe with me Cause your heart is safe with me No, I've been played before Just like a fiddle Then I was ignored Why did I give him a bow? You know I've been betrayed before I let him in when I should have locked the door Yeah, the shock was an electric flow That's when he rolls his eyes and says to me Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby I ain't like the rest of them Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby You can learn to hope again Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby You can't let your faith give up Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby Don't be scared to fall in love Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby Cause your heart is safe with me Cause your heart is safe with me Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby I ain't like the rest of them Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby You can learn to hope again Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby You can't let your faith give up Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby Don't be scared to fall in love Don't you worry, no, don't you worry, baby Cause your heart is safe with me Cause your heart is safe with me La, 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 la you know I've been let down before I couldn't get up but not anymore And now our young artist interview with Kendall Conrad And now we have Kendall Conrad right here in the studio with us. Welcome, Kendall. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have played for so many people. Like, you've played for the White House. You've played for Music Fest. You have played for theme parks, <laughs> um, private thing with Nicholas Sparks. Musical theater. She's done that, Sometimes. too. So, and, and you've opened for um, Rodney Acton. Well, I think we actually, if we could even show pictures of this, because I oh, pulled some do pictures. You? Yeah, of Rodney Atkins. Cool. Uh, Easton Corbin, Old Dominion. Are there yeah. more yeah. that you've opened for? Oh, Lord. Uh, Chris Cagle, I got to open for him. Uh, the Cadillac Three, the, those three guys, they're really cool. They're really cool. We like hung Fun. out with like Kelby at Soundcheck, my mom and I, and it was like it was so cool. That, um, that's awesome. But yeah, yeah. And then you you recorded like in Reba McIntyre's studio, that Star Trek Studios. That's where you recorded her first EP. Mm -hmm. 
and you yeah. even wrote a song that you're hoping she would uh, yeah, record, take, but, yeah. but she didn't. So not yet. Not, not there's yet. There's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. Right. So that's Country Queen. That's right? what I'm hoping. That's yes. the Country Queen there song. You go. So that's and that's out there on iTunes and everything. Okay, and you know, so I hear you also have done some acting, and you ran into a star, maybe that most some of us would have known in your acting. Yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, I did background work for Silver Linings Playbook because yeah. they they filmed it in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and um, they needed some girl to like be at the entrance for this one scene, for the banquet scene at the end. For yeah. if you've seen it, and um, they picked me, and I was like, okay, whatever. I've so seen I it. I go over <laughs> and like Bradley Cooper. I'm short and he's really tall, so I was like looking out like this. And yeah, and then yeah, like he fun. he like came into the ballroom and like bumped into us or whatever, oh, and like he was it was really yeah. cool. The was, magic, the magic of onset filming. It's very you, glamorous. And you've done theater <laughs> too. So was this something recent that you did when you're in the the what, Breakfast at Tiffany's? Yeah, yeah, that was. I mean, if it, it feels recent, it was this past May. Okay. Um, yeah, and that was in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and we we got it uh, right off of Broadway. Um, we were the first show to do it right after, like Amelia Clark, oh, that's and great. yeah, and that's really cool. Pennsylvania is where you're originally from, right? That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So the big thing, of course, that you're really got all over your social media and you're known for is that you got to stare the the stare. That's easy for you to say. I share. also got to do that. Yeah, stare. <laughs> she stared as she shared the stage. I did with none other than <clears throat> Keith Urban. So you got to tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean. That that's been my timeline cover photo like on Twitter Forever. and Facebook and it's like it's never coming off. Like I no. tell people, I'll be like <laughs> eighty. They'll be like, why do you still have that picture up when you were like twenty two of you singing with <laughs> Keith Urban? Because like I just in my mind that was just like I love him so much and I got to sing that song with him and I already like love that song and like yeah. So it wasn't even that I just won a contest or something. It was like I love him. Right. So, so you won the contest. You got, and we have the clip right. of it. Can we play it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's play it. We'll cut to it. And uh, she's from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Please, Michael. Michael, welcome. Her name is Kendall Conrad. Kendall. Come on out, baby. Superstar. That is so fun. Well, Bob and I were talking, you've done all these amazing things. We played on stage with Keith Urban. You sang at the White House, sang for Nicholas Sparks. I mean, and now she's on Music City Corner. We have to do something special for her, Bob. And what, would you have yeah. any, any idea of what we could do? To well, you know, I do my Bobology segment and the philosophy part department down at um, the University of Woolloomooloo. Really? Yeah, in Australia. Hmm, huh. Wondered if, if we might you know, just try to this work through. It's got to be special, memorable, Bob. Uh oh, well, I'm kind of scared. I'm a little the, scared. Uh, yeah, we the Australian scared. national anthem. Australian national anthem. No, I don't uh -oh. know if that's not we'll an get Australian accent. It. It's like I wonder Australians, if all let us rejoice, for we are young and free. We've golden soil and wealth for toil. Our home is girt by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage and thence Australia fair. I'm not over yet. Oh, I think you are. I'm <laughs> in <laughs> joyful strings, we let us sing. You know what? I that tell you what. Advance Australia <laughs> fair. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> There's all your Bruce's and Sheila's uh, down there. Sorry, I swore. We're so it. we're really sorry. We just <laughs> the next time you see Keith Urban, ask him if he would go ahead and, and sing that for you. How about that? Oh my you God! Share a stage with or the better time? yet, direct him to this clip. There you go. Watch okay. what you're your uh, Well, thank you, Kendall, for being on our show. And if you guys want to watch Kendall live, she's at Piranhas on Third Avenue in mm -hmm. Nashville, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. uh, every two, other yeah, two Wednesdays, Wednesdays a month. until yeah. August. So, thanks for coming on the show. Wow, yeah, no cool. problem. Thank you. We'll see you there. <laughs>
<laughs> I feel alive. And you know what else? Woo! We should go to a live event that's being covered right now. Yes! Events live. Yes! Coverage. Yes! Always live. Yes! Best time. Yes! Woo! Woo! Nailed it. You don't do play-by-plays when you're shaving? No, but what I will do is just say, it's got a good natural jawline, so we just want to accentuate. What are you? Are you like an actor, a musician? I'm actually a master barber. Frankly, I don't give a damn. I think it's a good look for me. It's a good new look. Hey, I know. Why don't, why don't we go see one of Bob's shows? Okay. Yeah, you wanna? Let's go. Well, come on. Okay. Look, I could be a reindeer if I really tried. See, look, look, look at me. I'm flying. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. okay. I just don't want the other reindeer. Are you sure you don't want me to prance with you? Because I, I can do it. No, 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 no. Do you want to be a reindeer? Yeah. I could follow you around everywhere until you find me my no, own No, 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 because no, it's the whole thing with Vixen, we don't want to talk about that. That's it. Yeah? Reindeer school. Okay. There's a certain amount of transmogrification that goes on with that. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. I... Really? I was just bluffing. <laughs> now it's time for fog! We're gonna play some clips for you! I don't like this guitar, I'm gonna go get another one. So tell us about the film. Fog is uh, about, let's see, it's a sociopath who is really? uh, put in a study um, that uses gene therapy and uh, some other psycho-counseling kind of things and the whole premise is to make him a feeling person, like Flowers for Algernon was to make uh, you know, not an intellectual person. An intellect. Okay, so they, like the book. So it's like based on that book. Yeah, and what, the, these wanted to see Elvis, who wrote it, Elvis Wilson, wanted to see what it would be like if they tried to make a non-feeling person empathetic, and what the ramifications of using science to wow. do that would be. Okay, so and then you played Matthew Fogg, the lead mm -hmm. character. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a clip. So let's watch it, and then you tell us about it. Okay. You are really good at your job, aren't you? Uh, yeah, that's what they tell me. Uh, but to be honest, my job is really simple. I study people. Every detail about them. How they behave. How they will behave. And then I create effective management programs that control risks and increase profits. Yeah. It's boring. <laughs> anyway. So, how can I help you? I just came to pick up your review notes for the week. You know, I can just email you those. Did you just come by to see me? So, um... <clears throat> not a rom-com, I'm thinking. Not a rom-com, but... No. So you, you played the sociopath. Uh-huh. So that's it. Um, so how did you, like, I mean, like, auditioning for the role and stuff? Like, how did, how did they, uh... It, oddly enough, I didn't uh, have to audition. Uh, Elvis wrote the script with me in mind, which now when I say it out loud sounds kind of odd. But um, he, we had worked together uh, many years ago, and he thought, hey, this guy might be a good, you know, good vessel for a fog. And yeah, okay. it's kind of a compliment, yeah. I guess. So yeah. um, we have another clip. We'll just go to... Just go to the foot. Sure. I brought you soap. I brought you new towels. You have your base in here. Everything you need. It's like you're a mess. You're disgusting. Do you want to touch yourself? Why would I want to touch you? Do something for me that's going to make me want to touch you. Because I want to. 
Um, so um, you're not like a method actor or anything. You know, method acting or the method was the brainchild of Lee Strasberg. And it's a, it's, a, it's a way of finding a characterization of a role by searching one's own emotional memories. Now me, for one, I haven't yet been a serial killer, so that's an emotional memory I'm just not carrying. And that's your Bobology segment for today. I'm, I'm fascinated by the, the juxtaposition of, of, of the operatic voice and uh, sociopathy. Thank you, Bob. Uh, yeah, we, we took that angle. Um, high art, I think. Yeah. You know, he, he's got an apex god complex, so well, high art would be his thing. I, I, I think the next uh, clip really kind of tells it all. Okay. The people I work with, well, they only know what I want them to know. So yeah, I keep my job. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. Uh, well, let me tell you, what we'll see about. <clears throat> you have two choices. You can keep your mouth shut. I kill you. Up to you. Absolutely fascinating film. Yeah, thank you. I'll be right back. Bob, you know, I never answered the question, I am, method. If you find someone, you think they're the one And you wanna go and mess it up Well, I got some things that you can do It's a surefire way to make her hate you If that's good enough, I can guarantee to pull through Don't wait or you'll miss your shot This might be the only chance that you got if you wanna lose her, follow these maneuvers Ignore her when you hear her call Flirt with other girls and make sure she sees you Running around, running around Listen to the rumors and no sense of humor Ignore her when she wants to talk Hang out with all the guys that love to make fun of her Keep them around, keep them around Act like you never knew her, this is how you lose her 